From gender bend to Yuri. From etchy doge fetishes to androids with feelings. From the action packed to Atta Meek. In another world with my waifus to tons and tons of farming simulators. The winter 2023 anime season was jam packed with a record number of anime titles. And after sitting through way, way, way too much of it, I am finally here to give you my top five anime of the winter 2023 anime season. As per usual, I'd love to hear you guys' feedback, so go down below and leave me a comment. Let me know what your top five anime are of the season. But with all that said, let's jump into my top five anime of the winter 2023 anime season, plus honorable mentions. I struggled for a very, very, very long time and picking what my number five would be. As per usual, these top lists, it's always the last one. You're like, there's all these here. Who's going to manage to scrape their way to the top? After a lot of debate, I finally decided on my number five, which is saving 80,000 gold in another world for my retirement. I absolutely love Mitsuha. <laughs> I think Mitsuha, the main character of this series, is easily one of my favorite female lead characters in a very, very long time. I guess since mine from A Sentence of Bookworm. And they're both these set guys. Interesting. And they're both trying to exploit the world. Interesting. <laughs> yes, that's kind of the idea of saving 80,000 gold. As the title would lead you to believe, this girl gets the ability to transport between our world and this fantasy world. Knowing that this world uses gold as a currency and that gold is worth a lot here, she decides to open a shop in this other world, <laughs> sell goods from our world, and then bring it back to our world to essentially exchange that currency. Yes, all for gaining 80,000 of it in order to retire. And what makes this show so great is like I said earlier, Mitsuha. She's a very relatable character. She does everything in this world that I would want to do. <laughs> like if I had that ability and I don't have OP abilities that make me able to take out everybody, I'm going to exploit it however I want. And so she takes the path that I honestly would. She makes the decisions that I think are really cool and really interesting. Thinking on a lot of things that won't get her attention, even though she will get attention. <laughs> but ways that will get her a steady income going in in order to retire. And her personality just is infectious. I love to see her joy. I love her taking on things and her mischievous attitude every now and then. While the other characters of the series aren't standouts, it's all carried by a main character who again is extremely relatable. She's willing to do the things she needs to do in order to get the job done. And she doesn't turn a blind eye to those that need help still. Mitsuha is definitely gonna go down as easily one of the best waifus of this season. And at the same time, she sold me on this series. Even though the series does have a lot of rough edges and the overall animation isn't incredible, <laughs> it was still a really fun ride and I loved every minute of it. Moving on to my number four, my gosh, Handyman Saito in Another World was a huge surprise for me. Following Saito, who is a handyman of our world, who was really underappreciated and everybody kind of treated him terribly. Nobody's seen what he was able to do in his life as beneficial. Then he's transported into a fantasy world and to make money, he ends up joining a party and he's useful there as kind of a thief character picking locks. But it extends more than that. This idea of this character being needed. This party sees a lot of benefit in him. He's able to repair gear. He's able to craft things. He's really useful to these people. And thus, he finds that this new world, he's much more appreciated. People don't always kick him to the curb. But that's the core concept, which will eventually lead to a really satisfying end to the series. And what's sprinkled throughout it is just absolute comedy gold. I found myself laughing out loud way too many times watching this show. <laughs> It's just that good. And I will admit that early on, it felt very skit based, very jarring that it would jump to different characters constantly, like having 20 different skits of 20 different characters in one episode. But thankfully over time, they sort of corrected that path and started focusing on everybody as they went to a common goal. And while I will say that I wasn't too much a fan with that direction change just because it got a lot more heavy and the heavy story itself wasn't that satisfying, it still all led to some really great character developments for the main cast. I love these characters so much. Saito's in his struggles for wanting to be wanted. Relza and her crush that she has on Saito. Her own insecurities she has. Morlock and him constantly forgetting things was always hilarious for some reason. And then yes, Laughinpon. <laughs> Best fairy ever. Now Toyama, Laughinpon. I loved her to death. And like I said earlier, it all kind of leads up to a really impactful and really emotional ending to the series. Although not completely straying away from the comedy, which made it amazing to begin with. Yes, it's an isekai, but again, it's another one of those ones where it's finding different purpose in a new environment. I think that's the main goal of it, rather than it being the sum of an isekai. And yes, Saito isn't OP, but he has to use his mind in order to help those around him. And I think that gives it a little better flavor than just blasting things. I highly suggest checking out Handyman Saito. It was an absolute treat. For my number three is Bungo Stray Dogs season four. My gosh, I 
love Bunko Stray Dogs. It is such a phenomenal series, and I just... I'm so glad I got caught up. I unfortunately fell off in the third season. I went back and binged through it just to watch this season. And I was super happy that I did because the later parts of season three is incredible. And season four is just, it's taking its writing up a notch, up a notch, up a notch. It just keeps getting better. It's one of those series where it's kind of unfortunate that most people in my circles and those that I've seen don't really talk much about Bungo Stray Dogs. It's one of those series that again, Every twist and turn, every episode, I'm hyped. I'm hyped for the next episode. It's kind of one of those writers that, despite having a really large cast, they do a really good job of interweaving each and every one of them. You understand their driving force. Their backstories are always incredible. And what's weaving them together is an overall plot line that I'm extremely interested in. Every twist and turn, I wonder how they're going to overcome the next problem they have. And let's be perfectly clear, <laughs> season four has introduced an extremely difficult problem for them to overcome. And I'm just desperate to find out how they're going to do that. I'm so happy it's got a fifth season because man, would I be mad? <laughs> man, would I be mad because I need more. I just love the writing in this series and it's so action packed. The visual style is fantastic. The action scenes are phenomenal. It's just leaps and bounds above any other character driven action show that I've ever seen before. If you have not watched Bungo Stray Dogs yet, please go watch it. And if you're not super into it early on, just know that it just keeps getting better. And honestly, it was like this close to taking the number two spot. <laughs> but moving on, let's get into number two. Number two, my gosh, the magical revolution of the reincarnated princess and the genius young lady. I absolutely adored this series through and through. If you ask me what my main nutshell reason for liking this series so much, it's characters. This show sells me on characters, character interactions, and their discussions and how they help and develop each other. Well, yes, the overall plot line is solid. It all drives the characters. It opens up with this princess that is seen as kind of the stain of this country because she doesn't have magic and she's seeking magicology in order to gain magic. And that's seen as a taboo in this world that all respects the spirits and how the spirits gave them magic. But eventually she meets Euphelia, the one that initially inspired her to love magic to begin with. And this is a girl that's discarded by the prince of this kingdom. So seeing this, Anisphia, the princess, decides to snatch her up off her feet. <laughs> and take her back to her laboratory where she studies her magicology. But that's where we get the chemistry that absolutely sold me on the series. For those who don't know, I absolutely adored Licorice Coil. And the main reason for that is because I loved the chemistry of the characters themselves. And I see almost the same type of chemistry here. The Genki main character who's hiding underneath that she's hurting, and the girl who's pretty much lost her whole purpose in life, opening the door to her to let her realize that I need to find something new. I've lived my whole life for this prince and now I need to find new purpose. And as they all come together and support each other for the ultimate issues that are gonna come up ahead, I think they nailed it. And every character they introduced going forward was phenomenal. I don't know the fact that Dio Media did an incredible job with the animation, keeping the characters on model, the character designs themselves were fantastic, on and on and on. And yes, it's Yuri, that's not Yuri bait. <laughs> that's a big one. It's Yuri. That's not Yuri bait. I loved everything about Magical Revolution and I highly recommend checking it out. Which all leads to my number one, which anybody that has been following my channel will probably know where this is going because it wasn't number two. It's probably number one. Yes, Pole Princess. I, I came out of nowhere. Pole Princess came out of absolutely nowhere. I checked it out. I absolutely loved it. The CGI was really well done. I actually thought that you did a really good job with the CGI. Yes, I know, I'm joking. It's my number one, without a doubt, drum roll, Oni my, I'm now your sister. My gosh, I love everything about Oni my, despite the fact that it was technically the controversial show of the season. You're not supposed to like Oni my. It's questionable. It's problematic. I don't care. I love Onimai, everything about it, which is actually extremely surprising. Now, yes, I had an expectation coming into it because Studio Bine was working on it, and I love Mushoku Tensei Jabba's reincarnation. But I came into it with this, this kind of hesitation because, honestly, to be perfectly clear, <laughs> most anime gender bin shows are not good. And they always kind of come out with that punchline, oh, it's this person, now this gender, and then there's the jokes, and then the jokes get repetitive. And it's always kind of in a way that's just kind of fetishizing it. Only my, while it does play off the gender bin aspect for punchlines, it's more done in a cute way. At its heart, this is a show about a guy that was a neat, his sister basically transforms him into a girl, 
He becomes dependent on his sister to teach him what it is like to be a girl. And over time, it seems like he starts to like this new life. He starts to dress up in front of a mirror and realize how cute it is. And then he kind of has to catch himself. Everything that was once normal no longer is normal. And everything that is now new norm becomes things that he slowly realizes, I kind of like this. And that's where the surprise kind of comes in the series. Along with the fact that it has so much heart, I wasn't expecting this much heart to be put in this series. Yes, at its core, it's his sister who lost her brother to his neatum, <laughs> wanting to pull him out of that shell, make him have purpose in life because he has no purpose. He even himself acknowledges, I don't have purpose. But now with this new opportunity, he finds purpose in trying to support his sister with her experiment. But it also comes with a catch in the idea that you realize really quickly the sister misses her brother. She used to adore her brother. Her brother was the thing that she'd strive to do well, just to impress. And seeing all those really heartfelt moments that are sprinkled throughout the series, just, oof, it, it warmed my heart. But that's actually all a testament to this adaptation. I read the manga alongside the anime, and I can truly, honestly say, Studio Bind didn't adapt a manga. They made an anime. What I mean by that is it wasn't a copy and paste panel for panel dialogue. It was they took the core concepts of each chapter and made a story out of it. And it never felt out of paste. It never felt too much. It was really well crafted. And I give them a massive amount of credit for that. Additionally, adding on to that, Akio Watanabe be involved with the storyboards and just how every single one of these animators seemed like they, they loved what they were doing. They honestly loved this project because there's so much passion in the animation. This is animation that most studios go, you're doing too much, stop. You're making us look bad. That kind of animation. The animation where the characters look like they're alive. Capturing the style, capturing the character emotions, the shocks. The surprise, the embarrassments, all those things were so beautifully done. Onimai is probably going to go down as one of my favorite series of all time. A series that, honestly, most people question. Should this exist? A series that makes many people raise their eyebrow. And yes, a series that is difficult for me to just plop it in front of my grandma and say, check this out. But it's a series that I'm super happy that I watched. It wasn't stuck on Mahiro perving out over girls. It's a story about a boy being introduced to what it's like to be a girl, while all the while keeping it lighthearted enough with the shenanigans around them. If you want to hear me gush more, I made a whole review for the series, but that is my top five anime of the winter 2023 anime season. So proceed to judge me in the comments while I talk about my honorable mentions, because yes, I do have a lot of honorable mentions. It's like I said, I watched a lot of stuff this season. Tomo-chan as a girl absolutely shocked me. I really, coming into it, I wasn't enjoying it. I honestly didn't like the main two pairs. They just weren't that fun. But what really sold me on that series was Misusu and Carol. The supporting cast of that series absolutely sold me on it. And it's not that I continued to hate the main two characters. It was more the fact that because I liked these other two characters and how well they interweave these characters together to tell this overall story, I think it was beautifully done. To Your Eternity, the only reason it's not in my list is because it had a massive lulling point, which To Your Eternity is known for. But I have to say that the core mechanics that they introduced with the second season blew me away. I was super into it. It fixed every problem I've had with the series up until this point, this fatigue that I've been having with the series, and it has me extremely excited for season three. Sudane, season two, my gosh, so freaking gorgeous. <laughs> the sound, the visuals, the presentation, Kyoto Animation nails it. I thought season two of Sudane was bounds above season one. It's kind of like my same feelings that I had with Sound Euphonium. I didn't like season one, and then I loved season two. Same thing here. Didn't care for Sudane season one and season two just took it to a whole nother level. I love the new stories they presented, the new characters that were in it. It was just really well put together. And like I said, just, oh my gosh, the sound, <laughs> like just the sound alone. Like it just feels like you're there. Don Machi season four, part two, really fantastic season overall. Like season four Don Machi was incredible. Part two, what it kind of instilled upon me was a really well-crafted story of just dire situation. Like it presented a very terrible situation and it had my gut wrenching over what they were going through. It didn't really have a satisfying end to it. And I think that's the only reason it's not in my list, but I still think it's Don Machi, which has kind of been falling off for me, recovering a lot of my respect. Nier Automata version 1.1a, whenever that decides to finish, 
<laughs> but I've been enjoying what they have managed to animate and present to me. It's just a really interesting world and I want to know more about it. I want to start digging more into it. Endo and Kobayashi Live, uh, this series is just way too cute. I love Lissalate. She's super cute. I love that she wasn't just a Sundere. They really broke her archetype a lot. Just great characters and a really surprising end to it. I really wasn't expecting it to go the direction it did. And I just overall, it was just a really pleasant ride. And that's all. I, I, I can't name every single show that I've watched. That's it. That's my top winter anime of 2023. I hope you guys enjoy this video as always. And like I said earlier, make sure to go down below, hit that like button, and then leave me a comment. Let me know what your top favorite of the season are. I greatly appreciate you guys dropping to the channel, and I hope you guys enjoyed this video as always. If you're new to the channel, make sure that subscribe button so you get all my content. I do news reviews, first impressions, top list. If it's anime, it's pretty much here. And yes, I'll be doing reviews to wrap up the winter season, and we'll be going right into the spring season, which I'll be doing first impressions for every single show of that season. So if you don't have time to watch everything, that's what I'm here for. I watch the shows, I give you a brief idea of what I've seen, give you some screenshots, and you can decide from there if it's something you want to check out. Additionally, if you like this content and you want to support the channel more, I have a Patreon link, a tips link, and a super thanks button down below, as well as you can become a member of the channel itself. I really appreciate everybody for their support. A special thanks to Shadowflex, who recently became a Patreon supporter. I greatly appreciate it, and y'all take care.